Good morning. The entrance antiphon. Let the hearts that seek the Lord rejoice. Turn to the Lord and his strength. Constantly seek his face. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. And with your spirit. As we begin our service, let's remember that we do sin, we're not perfect, we need God's mercy and love and forgiveness. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May the Lord Jesus Christ have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Let's be seated. Scripture. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, be kind to one another, compassionate, forgiving one another as God has forgiven you in Christ. Be imitators of God as beloved children and live in love. As Christ loved us and handed himself over for us as a sacrificial offering to God, for a fragrant aroma. Immorality or any impurity or greed must not even be mentioned among you, as is fitting among holy ones. No obscenity or silly or suggestive talk which is out of place, but instead thanksgiving. Be sure of this that no immoral or impure or greedy person that is an idolater has any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God. Let no one deceive you with empty arguments, for because of these things the wrath of God is coming upon the disobedient, so do not be associated with them. For you were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Live as children of light. The word of the Lord. Behave like God as his very dear children. Blessed the man who follows not the counsel of the wicked, nor walks in the way of sinners, nor sits in the company of the insolent, but delights in the law of the Lord and meditates on his law day and night. Behave like God as his very dear children. He is like a tree planted near running water that yields its fruit in due season and whose leaves never fade Whatever he does prospers. Behave like God as his very dear children. Not so, the wicked, not so. They are like chaff which the wind drives away. For the Lord watches over the way of the just, but the way of the wicked vanishes. Behave like God as his very dear children. you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. 
Jesus was teaching in a synagogue on the Sabbath. And a woman was there who for 18 years had been crippled by a spirit. She was bent over, completely incapable of standing erect. When Jesus saw her, he called out to her and said, Woman, you are set free of your infirmity. He laid his hands on her, and she at once stood up straight and glorified God. But the leader of the synagogue, indignant that Jesus had cured on the Sabbath, said to the crowd in reply, There are six days when work should be done. Come on those days to be cured, not on the Sabbath day. The Lord said to him in reply, Hypocrites, does not each one of you on the Sabbath untie his ox or his ass from the manger and lead it out for watering? This daughter of Abraham, whom Satan has bound for 18 years now, ought she not to have been set free on the Sabbath day from this bondage? When he said this, all his adversaries were humiliated. And the whole crowd rejoiced at all the splendid deeds done by him. The Gospel of the Lord. I'd like to focus on one word from the Gospel, and that's hypocrites. Uh, the last couple of weeks we've been hearing Jesus talk a lot about uh, woe to you Pharisees, you hypocrites. So where does that word come from? It comes from a Greek word meaning actor or play actor. Uh, and the, the Greeks would uh, hold presentations once in a while like uh, dramas and plays and things like that. And so in order to embellish the character, they would wear masks uh, to make the character come alive. And so that's really where the word hypocrisy comes from. It comes from the Greek, from the Greek term. And it was uh, just very uh, uh, important for them to convey those characters in, to the uh, utmost uh, so that everybody could have a joyful, uh, a good time at, at the uh, play. Uh, but eventually that word got to be uh, used uh, in a negative sense. Uh, Jesus calls uh, people hypocrites 24 times. So you know it's a, it's a term that, uh, that he doesn't like uh, because it's an attitude that suggests that, that those, those people are, are not being truthful. They're, they're underlying, there's an underlying cause there for something that's not, uh, not truthful. Um, Pope Francis talks about hypocrites in one of his homilies. He said that the Pharisees uh, relied on precepts and laws, but without goodness and love. He said they're two-faced. They use flattering words, but they lead the people of God down a dead-end road because they use the language of betrayal and not of truth. Uh, if you've been watching any TV at all in the last months, you know that uh, there's been candidates for office who are leveling accusations against their opponents. And I usually have a tendency to believe the accuser first because I know there's always time for the opponent to, to do a counter uh, on, by, by uh, buying uh, ad time on TV. So when the opponent comes on, I listen to see if they uh, are, are ready to address those issues that were brought up by the, uh, by the opponent. And uh, if they don't br bring them up at all, then my uh, hypocrisy indicator goes up a notch or two against that person. So it's kind of a way to, uh, to hold them accountable uh, for, for what they're doing. Uh, but uh, we have to remember that the message of Jesus is, is just not for those guys. And uh, we too are guilty of hypocrisy in, in certain areas of our lives. And uh, the whenever we hear the gospel message or a, a biblical passage, uh, uh, we really should need, we need to reflect on how, how does that affect me? You know, how can I improve my life by, by listening to those words of Jesus? Uh, Pope Francis, uh, he says that uh, 
uh, hypocrisy is not the language of Jesus, nor is it the language of Christians. He says, in fact, the hypocrite is capable of destroying a community. And in his closing sentence, he says, let us ask the Lord to guard us from this vice, to help us to be truthful. And if this is not possible, to keep silent, but never to be a hypocrite. So let's say what we mean, mean what we say, and shed the mask of hypocrisy, and, and, to, and let everybody see us for who we really are. Good, faith-filled people of God. Who, who, trying, who are trying to shed the, the mask of hypocrisy so that we too can live that truthful life that is uh, not encumbered by any mask that we are wearing. So let's uh, stand and we can give the, hear the petitions. For the church in today's world, as she continues to serve as the fullness of truth, gospel, goodness and beauty, let us pray to the Lord. For those who lead nations, may they be guided by God's spirit of love and compassion, let us pray to the Lord. For those who are ill or infirm, for those who care for them, let us pray to the Lord. For our community of faith, may the light of Christ guide us in our discipleship, let us pray to the Lord. For those who have died, may they rest in peace. Let us pray to the Lord. Let's take a moment to offer our own personal intentions to God. For these petitions and for Elizabeth Elbert, for whom this Mass is being offered, we pray to the Lord. The loving God, listen to the prayers we place before you today and answer them in your goodness. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Remain standing. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom of God, and the glory yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not in our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. <clears throat> Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. May your sacraments, O Lord, we pray, <clears throat> perfect in us what lies within them, that what we now celebrate in signs we may one day possess in truth through Christ our Lord. Amen. <clears throat> the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your lives. Thanks be to God.